Uh, Hormi Hardy, this is Captain Jack here. I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur in training. This is my show. I talk about everything tabletop and cafe alike. So, um, uh, a couple of things here. I want to apologize for not having a video yesterday. I'm, uh, Friday was my birthday. Woo! So, I'm, uh, I wanted to dedicate my weekend to a little bit of a celebration, but I'm back on track now. And one of the big things I did finally manage to finish is my El Shadal deck, as you can see from my glorious non non Dice Masters play map. So, I'm, uh, Originally, I wasn't a fan of the Shadal deck, and then um, uh, my buddy from Whiteout Music showed me um, uh, a really cool way to go about it with just the structure decks. That actually makes it fairly good with just the structure deck alone. So thirty dollars, and I threw together uh, thirty dollars, some new sleeves, and I threw together a uh, half decent deck in my opinion. So I figured let's get into it. So we're gonna start the deck off with my three of uh, three Shadal Squamatas. Uh, this card can, um, uh, so basically when you, when it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can send a Shadal monster from your deck to the grave. So you can play off of that to get even more Shadals into the graveyard twice as fast, so pretty much it just, it's sort of an extender at this point, and it leads to uh, better cards. I'm also running, oh, for the record, they all have flip effects, it's just, I'm gonna be kind of ignoring them on the account of, like, how seldom you use flip effects in this scam in the modern era of Yu-Gi-Oh! There are a few cards that in this deck that do in fact let you play off of the uh, play with the flip effects. But like like I said, we're just gonna more or less focus on the graveyard effects. Next is Shadal Beast. This is the only one that actually has a half decent flip effect for any of these. Of like basically if it's flipped you draw two cards and discard one card from your hand. But it's flip, uh, but it's when it's sent from the deck to the grave, you get to draw one card from your deck. Who can complain about that? A free card is a free card. Two. Shadal Hedgehogs. The reason I'm running two is because I did mess with the variables a bit. I felt like three was sort of a bit much in a sense. So I reverted that down to one. And basically what it does, since to the graveyard, you add a Shadal to your hand. Next we're running one dragon, one Wendy, and one Ariel. You're mainly going to be using these two for their attributes. You're mainly just going to be using it to get into your other fusion plays. But this one, I'm uh, once sent to great by card effect. Wendy will bring out a should, uh, flip effect monster face down from your deck. And Ariel will banish three cards from either graveyard. So it's kind of like Soul Release. So it's almost like a Soul Release for the deck. Plus, when it's flipped, you get to bring back one of your Banish at All monsters. And this one finally will deal with opponent's back row. So you can pop a spell and trap by card. Some non should all for running in the deck now are three copies of the Mathematician. It's an Earth attribute, that makes it great, but basically when normal summoned, you get to send a level 4 lower monster to the graveyard. So it's pretty much a Foolish Burial and an Armageddon Knight for the deck, and it lets you play into a lot of your great combos. Plus, if it's destroyed by battle, you get to draw a card. Three copies of Dark Armed Dragon. Um, Dark Arm Dragon can be special summoned if you have exactly three Dark Monsters in your grave, which can be manipulated very easily. It's fantastic in your opening hand, plus you can banish Dark Monsters from the grave to pop your opponent's cards, and you can use you can use all these attributes to get some fusion plays. Two copies of BLS. Um, I'm thinking about bumping that up to three, but the thing with it is that you don't really use it for its summon, you use it for the fact that it's a light monster, so you can summon into your El Shadal construct, which I'll get into later. But, like, you can also use its banish effect if you manage to take advantage of it, but for the most part, you're using it for the fact that it's a light monster. Next, I'm running one copy of the Armageddon Knight, for obvious reasons. And, Purple Cerberus just because, again, it's an Earth monster. I just want to make sure I have it. I'll get into, like, why the Earth monsters are so important later, but it has a decent effect, too, if you're 
going so if you um, uh, if it's in the graveyard and you end up having to go first so that your opponent won't be able to beat you at give you as bad of a beatdown. Now for the that's it for the monsters. Let's move into the spell card, shall we? So for my spells, I'm running three copies of Shadal Fusion. Uh, so basically. I want to say it's a polymerization for the deck, but not really. It's more like a super poly on the account, but you're only able to fusion summon using monsters you control on the field. However, if your opponent controls the monster summon the monster summon from the extra deck, you can draw you can use monsters from your deck as well. So it's a it's a much better going second card for this deck, but it still gets the job done. Next, I run three copies of El Shadow Fusion. Um, El Shadal Fusion definitely acts as a polymerization for the deck that you can use it to fusion summon into a standard Shadal monster by using monsters from your hand. It's Hander Field, right? It's Hander Field, right? Uh, Hander Field, yep. Downside to it is the once per turn, but it's a quick play, so you can kind of play off of that. Next time running. Three copies of Super Polymerization. Yes, I admit I jumped a rarity on that one. I just had it. Uh, it's great for the fact that, you know, one, your opponent can't respond to it, and two, it's a quick play as well, but it uses cards from either side of the field, so if your opponent tries to summon it to something, because it really plays into attributes, so you just activate that, discard a card, and boom, you can... Whatever your opponent just summoned, you can turn that into a monster for you. A monster for you that will play off of card effect. The only thing, the flaw that does exist in this, uh, in that move is either one, if you've used up all of the attributes that you, if you used up all the fusion that you had for that attribute, or two, if for some reason they're running a divine monster. Like, for, for some reason, if your opponent is running Slifer, Obelisk, or Ra, and the rare chance that those pop up, you're a little screwed. Look at some other cards. You have Nefshadal Fusion. Of uh, You equip it to a monster, and you turn it to any attribute you please, and then during the main phase, you, ha you can Fusion Summon using a card from your hand or field, as long as one of the cards is the monster equipped with that. So it's great just for you to determine any attribute. Actually, I might bump this up to two, because I like seeing this more. Instant Fusion? Instant, fu uh, instant Fusion. Oh, sorry, that's the last fusion card. <laughs> anyway, so just pay a thousand life points, and you get to summon into one of your level five or lower fusion monsters, which lets you summon into your window, but we'll get into that in a few minutes. Just some other cards you're going to be running in the deck for draw power. You're going to be running three Allure of Darkness. I'm probably going to drop that down to two now that I've had some time to play with this deck. But basically, um, banish the Dark Monster from your hand, draw two cards. So, with all, almost half of the monsters, more than half of the monsters in this deck being dark, you come to find it's incredibly helpful. There's a weird red car in my driveway. I'm going to ignore it for now. Um, anyway, next we're running. Two copies of Pot of Avaris. Um, Pot of Avaris is awesome in this deck. In fact, I'm gonna bump that up to three. That's def I definitely recommend you swap the variable for these two. But basically, you shuffle five monsters in your grave back into the deck, draw two cards. But well, that is so great for this deck, especially with um, uh, the fact that your grave is going to be full half of the game if your deck is not full. If your graveyard is not loaded with monsters, like, halfway through turn one, either A, you bricked really badly, or B, you don't know how to play this deck. And the final card I'm running out of one of for spells is Foolish Burial. Now, you may have noticed, Jack, that's only 37 cards. Yes, it is. I'm cheating. No. Um, we actually, surprisingly, run traps in this deck. We're running three copies of Free Shadal Incarnation. This card brings out a Shadal monster from the grave in either face-up or face-down defense position. Then you can banish it to either cha to either change a face-down monster to face-up defense position or 
flip a face-up monster to face-down defense position. So that is it for the main deck. Let's get into our extra deck, shall we? So for starters, you want to run three copies. Actually, I might be off center of El Shadal Construct. The reason you're running this card is because... So when this card is summoned, you get to send any Shadal card in your deck to the graveyard. And that's not restricted to monsters either. That is any Shadal card. So like you could send Wretch to the graveyard so that you can banish it to kick off its, its flip effect. But that's really great just to... It requires a light and a Shadal monster. So you can play off of that to quickly get the cards to the graveyard and keep going from there. And plus, when it goes to the grave, you get to return a... What is it? Return a Shadal from the... It's card sent to the graveyard, took a bunch of Shadal, spell a trap from the grave, add to your hand. Yeah. So I believe all the fusion monsters have that effect. That when it's sent to the grave, you get to target a Shadal, spell a trap from the grave, and return to the hand. Next. Three copies of El Shadal Winda. You need, you need, you need this card on the field every game. Oh my god, so this card, it's all. So what this does is, in addition to having protection from being destroyed by battle by special summon monsters, it makes it so that neither player can special summon more than once per turn. So you can sit there and you can force your opponent, that's the end of their special summon. Need, you need, you need. The next one you want to run is two copies of a column. A column, um, uh, when it enters the battlefield, it negates the effect of a face-up card. And in addition, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can actually I believe this is the only one that has a different version of the effect of... Yeah, so when it's sent to the graveyard, you can add a Shadal card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So that's probably the best with its graveyard. Next, two copies of Brista and two copies of Chukanaga. One of these two, like I just said, you need, you need, you need it. What these do is they can act as counters, or basically if your opponent would play into a card, what is it? If your opponent would activate a... So, you can negate the activation. Well, you have it. When a special summon monster activates its effect, while you have a Shadal card in your hand, you can reveal the Shadal card, negate and destroy, and negate the effect, and negate the effect, and destroy the monster, and discard the Shadal card. This one, I think it's monster effect, or it might be. So when your opponent would special summon a monster, you can negate the summon, destroy the card by discarding a Shadal. So those are really good with Win either of those are really good with Winda on the account that you can just sit there, negate, 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 and that's all and once per turn for summons. The only thing you have to worry about is the possibility of something like Dark Ruler No More or Mystic Mind. In which case, at the moment, there's not really much of a response to that. I suppose you could try running Judgment in here if you really wanted to, but that's all I can think of. one copy of Windigo. It it's got a beast defense. You basically use it as a mob. You basically use it as protection for your monsters. And finally or not finally, excuse me. Anilatus. Uh, I really don't know how to pronounce this one, but this one I believe, what is it? Uh so neither player can. That's right. So neither player can special summon using. Uh, neither player can special summon from their hand or graveyard using spell or trap effects. So it doesn't do much on the account that most decks summon anyway, either from the deck or using monster effects. So it doesn't really do much there, but I suppose it can slow down certain decks. The final card we're running. One copy of Shadal Construct, two flip effect monsters to summon, and this card can be used as a fusion card for a Shadal monster. And once per turn, you can tribute. Is it tribute or destroy a Shadal monster you control? Uh, 
You can summon neither. You can send one from your face of uh, hand or field to the graveyard, and you can special summon this from the graveyard once per turn. So you can use it to get into your good fusion place pretty easily. It's a little hard to summon out on the account that again, not a lot of the time you're gonna have your flip monsters out. If it were Shadal, any two Shadal monsters, it would definitely be a three, I think. So that's what I have thrown together from just the cards of the structure deck. What do you guys think of this deck? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you're seeing and you want to see more, make sure that subscribe button. If you like this video specifically, I'd love it if you slap that like. And of course, if you think your friends will enjoy this video, make sure you share it with your friends too. Thank you very much for watching, and of course, I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Okay.